Um, welcome everyone to today's B3 webinar, an introduction to Bookshop, a new online bookseller. We have a big crowd today and want to extend a welcome to booksellers from the other regionals and to the industry folk who are here as well. We have, we have all of the attendees muted, but we encourage you to ask questions in the chat and we'll ask them of the presenters after their presentation. Now to introduce our presenters from Bookshop, Sarah High and Andy Hunter. As the partnership manager, Sarah focuses on outreach with independent bookstores across the country, serving as a liaison between booksellers and bookshop. Before bookshop, Sarah was a bookseller and manager at Book Culture on Broadway in Manhattan. She was also previously an intern at Catapult, Counterpoint, and Soft Skull Press as the publicity and marketing intern and later the full-time publishing intern. Andy Hunter is the CEO and founder of Bookshop, the online bookseller that's set to launch the week after Winter Institute. He is also a book publisher of Catapult, Counterpoint, and Soft Skull Press, and the web publisher of Literary Hub, Crime Reads, and Bookmarks. Before that, he founded Electric Literature. So now over to you, Andy and Sarah, to fill us in about Bookshop. Great, yeah, thank you all for being here. Um, I wanna append to my bio that before I was in the book world at all, I was, um, uh, IT person at, at Disney and MGM, and I had a extensive background in e-commerce um, and doing things like DVD distribution um, and working on the back of house systems there. So I had this odd digital background um, in programming and, and designing systems um, for those companies that when I moved to public, the publishing world, I was happy to leave that behind um, because my true love was always for books. But um, now I find myself um, happily relying on those skills to try to build things that will benefit the ecosystem that we all um, are part of and we all think is so important. Um, Bookshop came about from a conversation I had at Winter Institute almost two years ago now with Christine from Word Books in Brooklyn, um, where she's, she was on the ABA board and she wanted to know if I had thoughts about IndieBound and how to improve IndieBound. And I said I would think about it and I thought about it for a while. And um, I went into the ABA and presented some ideas that summer, right around June, and um, they ended up inviting me to their board meeting and I talked about my ideas there about what they could do to make IndieBound a more robust system for capturing consumers, basically. Um, and they ended up really liking my ideas, but there were some things that they weren't able to do as a trade association, such as I think that distributing payments to their members and things like that. Um, there are rules around it. There are rules around them and selling products that they wouldn't be able to do bookshop except or change IndieBound exactly as I conceived of it. So when we talked about the best road ahead, we decided that the best thing to do would be to start an uh, independent company and get into partnership with the APA and um, find some investors that believed in bookstores and um, build this thing on our own and then work with the ABA and work with IndieBound to try to make it as successful as possible. And that's what we did. Um, we don't, I mean, sometimes people ask us who our investors are. Our investors are all individuals. There's no venture capital in Bookshop. Nobody's looking to get a 10 times return and sell the company to somebody else. Um, the investors are people like Will Hurst, um, who is the chairman of the board of the Hearst Corporation and is also a huge fan of bookstores. Uh, people like Morgan Entrican. Um, publisher of Grove Atlantic, and Terry McDonald, legendary um, editor of Rolling Stone, Esquire, and Sports Illustrated, um, a producer of the Book of Mormon, various individuals who just happen to love bookstores. And they put their money behind this, not hoping for a quick return, because Bookshop by design, as we'll get into, um, gives away most of the money it could potentially make. Um, by design, we're trying to support bookstores and we're also trying to support media that writes about books and 
people that advocate for books online, including everything from book reviewers on the New York Times book section to people on Instagram that are constantly posting about books and advocating for books. Um, so we, Bookshop gives away about 60 to 70% of, of any profit that we make on a book, depending on how it comes to us. And that's all going back into the ecosystem. And the money that we are taking is really just to keep it going and to make sure that we can be self-supporting, we can um, keep it evolving so it's able to be competitive with Amazon and um, be successful. So the, the three reasons that I really wanted to do something with Bookshop are that, first of all, as a publisher, all the time I tell our authors, don't link to Amazon. Don't post links to Amazon on Twitter. Don't post on Facebook. Don't put a link to Amazon in an email to your friends and family when your book comes out. Um, and most of the time, they take the advice, and most of the time, they link to IndieBound. But when I'm asking them to do that, unfortunately, I'm really asking them to forgo sales because IndieBound is not converting at the same rate to sales as Amazon does. Not nearly. And so if an author has 10,000 fans on Twitter and they post a link to IndieBound versus Amazon, they will probably sell maybe 10% of what they would sell if they posted an Amazon link. And so it's not a really fair thing to ask authors to have to forgo sales to support the indie ecosystem. They should be able to do that and sell their books. And I think that's a really important key to making sure that all publishers, like everybody believes in IndieBound, everybody believes in the indie ecosystem, but until we can be competitive with Amazon on conversions, it's always gonna be something of a hard ask. That's also true for advertising. When people pay for, for ads for books um, and, they do, and they want to link, they can link to Amazon, they can track that sale, they can actually see did that ad generate a sale was it effective? And they have a higher, much higher conversion rate, like I would say over 10 times, maybe, maybe even 100 times um, for Amazon versus other platforms. So we need to have something that converts well and that allows advertisers, publisher advertisers to get the same kind of tracking metrics that they get from Amazon. So that's one part of the puzzle that I wanted to help solve by doing something that was a little bit more effective than, than IndieBound currently is. Um, Andy, the, can I um, stop you for just a second? Sure. I think that your video has frozen, so people are hearing you say everything, but they're not actually seeing you talk. Is that um, intentional? No. Oh, there we go. That's okay. much better. <laughs> yeah, so let's, let's go from there. Tell me if that happens again. That's my computer acting up. Um, so that's problem number one. Just IndieBound needs to be better. And problem number two is, as a web publisher, as a publisher of Literary Hub, which now gets over 4 million page views a month, all those people love books, and they're inclined to support indies. Um, and the publisher of Electric Literature, which gets about 750,000 a month. And having been in the media world and having contacts at everywhere from New York Magazine to Condé Nast, um, I know that a lot of the ad revenue that used to come for books has dried up. And that's partly because the publishers are spending that money either on Facebook or Instagram, or they're spending that money on Amazon itself. They're spending on Amazon marketing services, which again, takes money out of the ecosystem that used to support independent booksellers and authors and gives it back to these conglomerates that are very, very aggressive and ultimately unhealthy for the ecosystem. But that's been happening. And so now you have a lot of publications that can't really afford to cover books anymore. Or, you know, they certainly can't afford to support it through advertising because the advertising has been drying up. And you can see newspapers are dropping their review sections. You can see the New York Times book review getting thinner and thinner. And I need, we need something that supports these publications and affiliate revenue is the best choice right now. Affiliate revenue is now about 20% of the average digital publications revenue. And affiliate revenue, in case you don't know, is basically a commission. If you write about a book and you post a link to Amazon and somebody clicks on that link and buys the book, 
Amazon gives you four and a half percent of that sale as a book um, or as a retailer affiliate. And so effectively, Amazon, through these affiliate networks, have created this giant funnel that's really as large and wide as the web, where all of these publishers, um, I don't really want to name names, but almost everybody that writes about books online that has a large audience is an Amazon affiliate. And they're all funneling all of their readers straight to Amazon to get that 4.5% that they need to keep going. And so we need an alternative to that if we're going to survive for the next 100 years. We can't, I mean, 100 years is ambitious, so let's say 10 years. We can't allow Amazon to be the only affiliate game in town for book commissions because they're driving so much traffic. So we need an affiliate program that benefits independent bookstores. Um, and that's what Bookshop is designed to do. And we're lining up media affiliates. We're very fortunate to already have the New York Times on board. They're going to have bookshop buttons on every bestseller list and every, every review um, of every book on the New York Times website and then the app. We'll have a link to Bookshop to buy the book. They'll also have a link to Amazon, but at least they'll have a link to Bookshop. And the more we educate the public about what Bookshop is, the more we can try to get some of those sales that are all those affiliate sales going to Amazon and get them to go to Bookshop instead. Bookshop pays a 10% affiliate fee instead of a 4.5%. So um, it's a better deal for publishers. And I think that a lot of people who are in publishing and in the world of media are people that grew up with bookstores and a really meaningful part of their lives. Um, they're people who decided to become readers, you know, and then decided to become writers. And they're people who are going to want to support independent bookstores. So the more viable we prove it to be, the more we're going to see those publications embracing us and linking to us. And I, that's a really important part of keeping Bookshop successful. Um, and the third part that we would like to help with is um, the stats are about 150 bookstores are generating five figures or more from their websites. And that's awesome. And I want all bookstores to be generating e-commerce revenue. E-commerce revenue is growing by about 15% every year as a part of all um, commercial consumer activity. So you can imagine if that rate keeps up, there's going to be a point where if a business is not offering any way to keep their customer online, that the same customer that goes into their store, they want to keep that customer 24 seven, no matter where they are, if they're on their couch on a Sunday, or if it's 11 o'clock at night and they just saw uh, an author appear on um, the daily show, we want them to be able to buy from their local indie that they love. And right now, most of those customers that are buying from their local indies in the daytime are buying from Amazon at night. And it's rough, but it's really, you know, it's a reality and we should acknowledge it. And so the 150 stores that have adapted and have great websites that they've, they've invested time and money into, and they have great email lists, and their social media presence is driving customers to those websites, those are perfect. A lot of those people are indie bound, uh, indie commerce customers and indie like customers. We don't really want to touch them. We certainly don't want to compete with them. We want them to retain their customers. Um, but for all the other bookstores, there's 2,000 ABA members, um, at least another 850 of them are proper bookstores that really aren't doing anything online. We want to give them a solution that doesn't require any internal resources, doesn't require any money, and doesn't require any technical knowledge to set up so that they can basically get a URL and put it on their bookmarks, put it on their bags, put it on their receipts, and tell their customers that they can buy from their bookshop affiliate page um, if they want to support the store when they're not around. And how we do that is by partnering with Ingram. Ingram is doing um, a ton of direct -to consumer fulfillment already for stores like Target, Walmart, and Barnes and & Noble. And they will be doing it for Bookshop as well. They can get any book to any customer that's in stock within two to three days. Um, and they've pretty much got it all worked out. They're already doing over 10 million a year um, direct to consumer orders. So Bookshop will, you know, even if we're wildly successful, we probably won't be one of their top three customers. 
and they do a good job. They, um, they have a less than 2% complaint rate or return rate for those direct-to-consumer shipments. Um, and basically, by partnering with Ingram and doing it this way, stores don't have to worry about inventory. They don't have to worry about paying an employee to pull a book off the shelf. They don't have to worry about that employee putting that in a padded envelope that had to be purchased somewhere and stored somewhere in their store. They don't have to worry about sending that employee to the post office, buying postage, dealing with any kind of complaint or customer wondering where the package is, all that stuff the store doesn't have to worry about. And so it's a really, really easy way for stores that are resource strapped to participate in e-commerce without doing anything besides supplying the customer with the link. And that link could be supplied on a, on a receipt or a, or a bag. It could also be supplied on that bookstore social media or in an email or, you know, however. Um, but really creating that easy, low friction way for bookstores to sell online is the third thing that Bookshop is hoping to accomplish. So helping stores that currently don't sell books online to make that transition creating an affiliate network that can be competitive with Amazon's and helping authors and other people that want to support indies have a universal umbrella place to link to that will support indies and also be easy and give people the same kind of um, pleasant consumer experience that they could get elsewhere when they're shopping online. Um, and as a publisher and somebody that cares about the general ecosystem, um, you know, I think it's, it's really great that there are stores that have great websites and, um, and I want, we want to like work with them in the best way possible by giving them money. We just basically have 10% of every sale that's made on Bookshop that's coming from the New York Times or coming from Literary Hub or coming from a book club, 10% of that sale will be given to bookstores. Um, that is going to happen every six months, and it's actually visible on the site exactly how much money we've raised, and bookstores will be getting that check with a, um, a transparent accounting, and the only thing that you have to do to get that money is tell us that you want it. You don't have to promote Bookshop. You don't have to tell a single person about it. Um, all you've got to do is say, we want to be part of the pool, and we'll cut you the check and send you the accounting. And so it's very, very easy to participate in that. Um, and then the bookstores that are using bookshop links to sell books or providing recommendation lists to bookshops, which I'll show you in a second, um, those stores will get 25%. Now, to, I know a lot of people have questions about that 25% versus 10%. Any store, whether or not you have anything to do with bookshop, if you have an ABA membership and a physical location, you can be part of that 10% pool and we will divide up 10% of our gross receipts, not, not profits, but gross receipts. So the top of every dollar that's spent on Bookshop will go to the, those stores that are participating in that pool. No questions asked, as long as there's a physical location, because we are trying to support physical bookstores. Um, that's a given. And then the 25% is for the stores that want to use Bookshop links. Um, and the reason that it's 10% or 25% is, after you pay Ingram, and after you pay the publisher, and after you pay the credit card processor, and for pick, packing and shipping, um, you end up with about 70% of that book's cover price for an, a normal book with a normal wholesale discount is eaten up. So you end up with about 30% of the cover price to spread around. And I, think you're, I think you're, um, your screen froze again. I'm sorry to interrupt. Sorry that my, That's my good. Um, so yeah, just keep telling me when that happens. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so in the case of the 25%, basically we're giving the store 25% of the cover price. We're only taking 5%. So on a $10 book, that would mean that we would take 50 cents and the store would get 250 and the remaining $7 goes to the publisher and Ingram and, and the payment processor and all of that. So, um, so we really are trying to be as generous as possible and just take the amount of money that it takes to keep Bookshop going. With the case, in the case of an affiliate purchase, 
something that comes in from the New York Times, the New York Times will get 10% of that sale. And 10% of that sale would go to the bookstore pool. And 10% of that sale goes to bookshops. So in that case, if it's the New York Times or Literary Hub, or if we get something like New York Magazine or wherever, um, New York Review of Books is going to be a partner. That will be a $10 book sold from the New York Review of Books. We'll, $1 will benefit the New York Review of Books, keep them going. $1 will go to the independent bookstore pool, and $1 will go to bookshop to keep our platform going. And that's basically the way it works, and $7 will go to the publisher and Ingram and everybody else. Um, so in both cases, we're trying to be um, as generous as possible and make what we need to survive as well. And the final way that bookstores can participate and earn, earn money from bookshop is providing recommendation lists. Bookshop is going to be filled with recommendations. Um, one of the advantages, I think, of Bookshop compared to Amazon will be Bookshop is going to be filled with human beings, with human opinions. And that's what is so great about independent bookstores. And so um, every bookstore that wants to participate and give us a recommended list, a staff fix list, or a best of 2019 list, or whatever it happens to be, if you have a bookseller that's into thrillers and they want to write a list about their favorite thrillers, or if you have a local author who wants to do a list of the books that made them want to become a writer, or a list of best coming of age novels, or whatever, or the best cookbooks, or like, you know, autumn cooking, whatever it happens to be, if you provide us with a list, we will put that list on Bookshop. It'll be part of our recommendation engine. And anytime anybody buys a book from that list, you'll get 25% of that sale. So that's a way that even if you have your own website, and even if you don't want to tell anybody about Bookshop because you want your customer shopping from your website, you can still earn revenue beyond the 10% by providing us lists. And if people buy off of the list, you will get that revenue as well. So we're trying to come up with various ways that bookstores are rewarded for participating. And ultimately what we really want Bookshop to be is this big hive of people who love books and care about books and literary culture and um, are the people who really make up that ecosystem. So, if you have an author, if you have a book club, like a celebrity book club, like um, Emma Watson's, you can have a page on Bookshop. You can be providing your list, which is like your, your picks. And those can, um, whoops. Okay, those can be circulated through the system at any time that somebody buys from those lists, you benefit. Um, so all the people that are participating are always rewarded. And it's a different sort of model, you know, it's not, it's, it's not exactly anything that we've seen in e-commerce before. And so we're, we're hoping that, that it takes off and that we have a lot of people participating. Um, so with that, I'm gonna do a little demo and show you Bookshop. Now, this is the first time anybody's seen it. Um, so we still have eight weeks to work on this before we launch it. And it's important for everyone to understand it's not perfect yet, and it's not beautiful yet. It's, it looks okay, but um, it's not going to be the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. By the time we launch it, it will be more beautiful than it is now. So I'm going to share my screen, and let me know if you can see it. Yes. Great. Yeah. Okay. So this is Bookshop's homepage. And um, you can see here that there's the amount raised for local bookstores is always visible. And that's kind of like something like GoFundMe. One of the questions that I got early on was, well, how do people know that when they shop a bookshop, they're actually supporting independent bookstores? And so we want to make it really obvious. This is going to be sticky. So everybody will always see it whenever they're on the page. Um, and whenever they're on any book page, they always see how much we've raised. And so we have book lists here. We've got Pen America book list, book set in Los Angeles, animal fiction, Barack Obama's summer reading list. If Barack Obama was a bookshop affiliate and somebody bought one of these books from Barack Obama's reading list, he would get 10%. So you can see anybody that's promoting reading in our culture that wants to participate in bookshop can do that and be earning money at the same time. Now, obviously, Barack Obama doesn't need that money, but 
book clubs need that money and PTA associations need that money and publications like book and book bloggers, they need that money. A lot of people who are invested in promoting books and care about books do need um, that revenue and, and deserve it because what they're doing for our culture and keeping people excited about books and reading, um, you know, it, it should be rewarded. So we've got a whole bunch of different book lists that we're featuring here and they're all through different personalities, either individuals or publications. And, um, and this is all being sourced from Ingram. Now I wanna show you what it will look like if you become an affiliate. So I have, I'm logged in right now. If I scroll down to the bottom of the page, I'm gonna to go to our become an affiliate page and I'm going to join our affiliate program. And I'm gonna create a bookshop affiliate. So I'm gonna call it bookshop, bookshop. And the URL is gonna be bookshops, bookshop. And I just put in R about information. Um, I'm going to put in a link to our Twitter profile. I'm going to create a profile image, which is just our B logo. And I'm going to add a banner image. Um, for our store. And then you can see that took me um, a couple of minutes. And then I click create affiliate profile. Anybody that knows how to use Facebook can create this. No programming needed. Um, and now I have an affiliate profile and I can go to my storefront. So this is my storefront and I've got my header image. I've got my user profile. It looks like what people are familiar with, like Twitter or whatever. Um, obviously, if I'm a store, I can put a little bit about what my store is. Um, if I'm a book club, I can put about my book club. If I'm a chef who wants to have a list of my favorite cookbooks and list my own cookbooks, I can have information about who I am as a chef and etc. And I can link to all my social media and link to my core website if I have a primary website. So this is all in the about section. Now the one thing that this is missing is any books. Now if somebody searches for a book from this page and they buy a book, then um, I will get credit for that book as the affiliate. So anybody that searches for any book, it basically means that any book in Ingram's inventory is going to be in the bookseller's virtual inventory. So as long as somebody comes from your affiliate page, um, once they get into search and buy, fill up their cart with books, those sales will all go to you. And also that, that will remain true for the next 24 hours. So if, they're, um, if they came from you and then laughed and then decided to go back and buy the books, we will track that they came from you originally and that credit will go to you. So if I go back to my affiliate, profile now, I can create a collection, which is just a book list basically. So I'm going to create one now. I'm going to add a banner image um, for my collection. I'm going to call my collection um, Bookshop Staff Picks. I'm going to add a little text introducing the staff picks, which just says we asked our staff and contributors to tell us what they love this year. And I'm going to um, do an annotated list. You can do a list that is just purely the books, or you can do a list where you say a little something about the book. So this is going to be an annotated list. I'm just adding the ISBN. I click add book. And then I stick my annotation in here. Then I do the same thing over and over again. And while I fill out this list, Sarah's going to take over some talking. Hey, everyone. I'm Sarah. I'm the Partnerships Manager. Um, so as Andy mentioned earlier, this is a really, uh, this list building ability is a really great way to generate revenue 
for your store, 25% directly to you, um, without having to promote Bookshop um, as as your affiliate page. So you can you can get that revenue while also being a part of the 10% pool um, if you wish. And you can. This is a really great thing for your staff to do to um, be involved with Bookshop and still get that revenue, but it's you know as little as involvement as you'd like. And if you would like to create these lists, you can reach out to me and Kevin. So my email is sarah.hi at bookshop.org and his is kevin.chau at bookshop.org. And we would love to see the list you create. We've already reached out to some ABA booksellers for this, but we would love to have as many as we can, especially for launch. Can I ask you a question from booksellers while he's building the list? Sure. Um, there's been a number of questions about the affiliate situation. Um, how do people get approved to be affiliates? And would individual booksellers become their own affiliates outside of the store? Um, we don't really have an approval process. Um, people can become affiliates in the same way that anybody can create a Twitter profile. We don't really want to put up any barriers to entry. Um, that said, if an inappropriate affiliate appears, we will certainly be, be watching affiliate activity and flag people and we'll have a terms of use so that, you know, if somebody seems to be abusing it in some way, then we won't, we won't leave them up there. But generally, we want everyone to become affiliates. So if a bookseller wants to become their own affiliate, they can. But critically, a bookseller would not be a bookstore. So they wouldn't get 25% of the revenue from the sales. They would be a normal affiliate, so they would get 10%. So if you have a bookseller who also has a book blog, they might want to be an affiliate, and they might want to be an affiliate for their blog and get 10% of the sale. Um, or you might have a, have a store policy that, you know, you don't want your booksellers to be their own affiliates. You prefer that they participate through the store because you prefer that you participate in that revenue. That's fine, too. Um, but we don't really, you know, we're not really enforcing rules about affiliates. We want it to be as easy as possible. But I will jump in and say if you are going to be an affiliate bookstore, you do have to be an ABA member, and I will be checking that you are an ABA member and that you are a brick and mortar bookstore with a physical location. So now you can see here that I have an I. And now, um, the next fun thing that we're going to hear is that I've got pipes. I'm in an old building with pipes that, that make a lot of knocking sounds in the winter time. So we're going to hear the pipes knock for a bit in this demo. I apologize. But um, can everybody see that now we've got the staff picks demo list here yes. on, on the store page? So basically, when I want to create my bookstore page, I can create all these different lists. There's different ways that you can format the list. You can do it as a, as a sliding bar, like this one. You can also do a list that is a grid. If I click into this list, I can read all of the blurbs. So this is an annotated list. So I've gone ahead and given, like this could be my staff pick blurb. Um, so it's all annotated and this is the header image I added. And, um, and I can edit the list because I'm the affiliate who created the list. I can edit it at any time. So I can add books or remove books. Um, and anybody can add the book to the cart. Or, and you can see, when they add a book to the cart, they see right here, you raise $1.55 for local bookstores. Um, so that gives them an immediate reward. Um, if they want to add 10 books, and hit update, then they're gonna see that they raised $15.59. If they go all the way to checkout, then that month, that amount, that $15.95, is gonna be added to this currently only $8.63 because it's only, this is just for a demo, but um, you know they'll be able to see the impact that they made and it's all totally transparent. So that there's total accountability about how many dollars we've raised, and where those dollars are going. 
And with that, I'm going to stop sharing and we can, um, I think I covered most of um, what we wanted to cover. And so we can, I know that there's probably a ton of questions. So let's, let's just um, go into questions. Okay. Reset my video. So I'll just start with the one at the end. Um, it looks like most, if not all books are discounted from the manufacturer suggested retail price. How do you respond to indies that have active online storefronts for whose customers this will now look like a way to shop online, benefit indies and get discounts individual stores can't offer effectively siphoning sales? What about the concerns that online discounts in general devalue books and make customers think we're overpricing in store? I think that's a, it's a very important question. Um, the, the discounts on bookshop are generally, for a book under $20, it's 8%. So it's not gonna be a huge difference. It's not a dramatic discount. When we, well, after we launch, we will also try experimenting with free shipping versus discounting and see if free shipping is as much of a value incentivizer as discounts are. But ultimately, my belief is that we will have a lot of trouble surviving if we don't have any discount. That when a customer goes to a bookshop from the New York Times and they see a book being, uh, Michelle Obama's becoming for $32.50. If they don't see any discount on that book, they're gonna think, oh, this is gonna be cheaper on Amazon. And they're gonna leave bookshop and they're gonna go to Amazon and buy the book there. Whereas if it's got an 8% discount or a 10% discount, so you see that $32 crossed off and it's $29.90, most customers will not feel that flag of like, oh, I'm sure I can get it cheaper elsewhere. I've got to go price shop. Most customers, because people online are, you know, they're, they want convenience first. If they see that they're getting a discount that seems meaningful, they will proceed with the sale. Um, and well, so I think that in order to survive, because Amazon is discounting books up to 30% and Barnes and Noble discounts books, um, to not discount at all would make Bookshop really vulnerable to, to being dead in the water at, on launch. And if that turns out not to be true, and we will, when I've, I've said before that we're gonna iterate this thing and we're gonna work with bookstores to make sure that it's the best possible thing it can be. So we will actually turn off discounts for a week and we will see, did that affect our conversion rate? Are we suddenly selling half as many books as we did before? Um, if it turns out that the discount does not make a big difference in whether people follow through and buy the book, then we'll turn discounts off and that will not be an issue. Or if it turns out that free shipping is more meaningful than getting a discount, then we'll try to balance paying for free shipping versus um, discounting. But ultimately, the, the reason that we have some small discount is because we feel that based on what we know about consumer behavior online, if there is no discount, it's gonna be very, very hard to be competitive with Amazon. And we can get all the media partners and affiliates that we can get but if, um, if people, if, if the consumer mindset is that it's always going to be cheaper on Amazon and, and Bookshop doesn't do any discounts, then it's going to be uh, tough to compete with them. And, you know, but we'll val validate that and we'll see if it's true. Um, I do totally understand the concern about devaluing books. That's why we're not, never going to discount beyond 10%. And I completely understand that, like, inside a physical bookstore, you're not going to be discounting. So... Um, we don't want the price difference to be um, too meaningful, but but yeah, it's a tough, it's a really tough question that we are grappling with, and we're going to launch and we're going to experiment, and we'll have another thing that we want to talk about is that we're going to have an advisory board. So if you're interested in the discounting question, you can join our advisory board. We will run our experiments with discounting, and we will um, let you know what the what the answers are and we can all have a discussion about how to proceed from there. Ultimately, I think that the danger of not discounting and failing 
is worse than the danger of, um, of the slight price difference that would be created by discounting by 8%. Mm -hmm. And you can email me if you'd like to be on the advisory board. Another uh, bookseller asked, if they link directly to a book on Bookshop in their email newsletter, does that count the same as the customer starting from their Bookshop homepage? Yes. Any link, newsletters, social media, those will all be your affiliate links and you would get 25% of the sales. Do, do stores need oh, to- And you also get the customer information. So if beyond getting the 25%, if somebody buys from one of your links, we consider that your customer and we will share that customer's information with you unless they opt out of that. Um, just because of, for legal reasons, we can't share their information if they strictly forbid us not to. But our default policy is that if a store drives a sale to us, we will share their customer information with that store. Do stores need to sign up directly with Sarah or can they use the um, become an affiliate link at the bottom of the page? After we launch on January 28th, they will be able to just become an affiliate whenever they want. But if they want to make sure they're getting the 25%, they should reach out to Sarah so we can set them as a store affiliate instead of a normal affiliate. Generally, if, you're a, if you go through the become an affiliate link, you're going to get a 10% affiliate cut. And so if you want the 25%, you do have to let Sarah know that you're a store that's an ABA member, and then she can set your discount to be, your, rather your affiliate fee to be 25%. Um. Are you planning to compete with Goodreads in the future? Um, I want to compete with Goodreads very badly. <laughs> um, so I would love to. And if we make enough money to support that software development, we will. Um, I'm wondering as far as the regional organizations are concerned, because there's a couple questions around that. Are there ways that regionals can participate in this and bring in their members? Are you doing any kind of regional outreach? Yeah, I mean, we, we, did, we did the regionals um, and we're going to be a winter institute um, and we can onboard stores there like crazy with a consultation station. Um, and then from then on, yeah, we'll work with regionals in any way that we possibly can. Yeah. Um, the question of like, does somebody have to be an ABA member if they're a regional member? Is, an, is a question that we can discuss with the ABA and our board. But for now, because the ABA are such good partners with us and you know, they're, they're going to reroute IndieBound links to Bookshop after we launch. So we were respecting them as an organization. And so we're saying that you, know, you need to be an ABA member to, to be part of the pool. Will audiobooks also be included uh, as available through Bookshop? We hope to partner with either Libro FM or Hummingbird to to audiobook fulfillment, but ultimately it would be fulfilled through those platforms, not directly through Bookshop. Mm -hmm. um, how are you going to be? Uh, how is shipping calculated? Mm -hmm. uh, Ms. Ingram has has the shipping table already set up, so it's basically it's based on their rates. I think it's three ninety five roughly for standard, um, and then seven ninety five for expedited, mm -hmm. and then it does increase per amount of books. Yeah, and we will have a threshold of forty five dollars after which we have free shipping. We're also not when we launch, but later we're going to have a program sort of meant to emulate Prime, where if you join and become a bookshop member, you can get free shipping for all your orders. Um. Are you work, currently working with any test stores to testing out the program? No, we, we, we're going to start testing in about two weeks. Mm -hmm. This, what you just saw, just started working um, about five days ago. Mm -hmm. So it's a little, it's, we're still a little early. You know, we're trying to launch as fast as we can. We, I didn't even raise the money for this thing until June. So we're working really fast because we do think that every month matters. Um, and we also want time to work the bugs out. When, they, when you launch a new platform, it's never perfect. And we want to have a lot of time to make it as perfect as we can before uh, like next holiday season and all of that. So mm -hmm. by launching in January um, and having a few months in the spring to get everything working as good as we possibly can, um, we have a little bit of runway before um, we really are head to head with 
Amazon in the holiday season or something like that. Uh, so many independent booksellers write reviews on Edelweiss uh, for, for the upcoming books. Will you be working with Edelweiss to, to get those reviews? I have had a few conversations with them and I'm, you know, I'm really happy that Above the Tree Line is doing their new email program because I'm hoping that that will benefit stores too. And we think that everything that anybody does um, to help increase store sales is a good thing. So I hope that um, Edelweiss and Above the Tree Line will work with us and, and give the reviews to us and all of that and we can work with them um, as much as, you know, as much as they're willing, but we definitely want to do that. Um, will this have any sort of effect on Ingram's shipping times and stock levels for stores? No, it won't. It's a completely different division of Ingram. They're already doing consumer fulfillment for, for so many stores that um, this is going to be a drop in the bucket for them and it will be, you know, they'll, they'll do it the same way that they do all the other direct-to-consumer stuff. Um, a store asks, can we use our own top level domain and have a shop link? Yes, absolutely. Um, looking for more. And, and the shop link will also have a link back to your top level domain. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything you feel like you have? I'm still waiting for more bookseller questions. Um, do you have anything else that you wanted to add while we're waiting for more questions? I just oh. wanted to uh, mention that my, my role as partnerships manager is I'm very much wanting to do as much regional involvement as I can. Um, so moving forward, I would like to attend, you know, all the regionals and um, do as much bookstore outreach as possible. And I'd also like for you all to email me if you ever have any questions or, or have feedback for me or, or the team or the site. I'm always here to answer questions and that's my role, so. Okay, so I see a couple of questions. One about the 10% versus 25%. So the 10% pool is available to any bookstore in the US that has a physical location as an ABA member. They can, and it's gonna be divided evenly. So if we, have a million dollars in that 10% pool at the end of the year, then that million dollars will be divided evenly among all the stores that signed up to participate. And there's no requirement for that money. All you have to do is sign up and we send you the check because the reason that we exist is to help stores, period. Um, and that's the easiest and most concrete way to help stores is just to send them a check. Um, so that's the 10% pool. Now, if Stores don't have to sell a book on Bookshop. They don't have to be in a Bookshop affiliate to, to participate in that 10% pool. Um, a lot of stores that have invested a lot of time and energy in their websites don't want to participate in Bookshop, and that's totally fine. Um, we still want to benefit those stores, so we're going to send those stores the check from the 10% pool no matter what. The 25% is just for bookstores that are affiliates, um, so that bookstores who are affiliates, who are using bookshop links to sell their books, get the highest possible benefit that we can, we can do. So um, the 10%, like for a normal affiliate, which is like a book club or a media organization, the affiliate fee is 10%. But for a bookstore, we're giving them a much better deal because we want the bookstores who use bookshop to really feel like this is a viable way for them to sell books online and get meaningful revenue. Um, so technically, you know, there's three different, there's three different percentages. There's the 10% pool that is distributed to all the bookstores. There's 10% that normal affiliates get, um, which is in contrast to the four and a half percent that Amazon offers affiliates. But you all don't have to worry about that. That's for the other affiliates, that, that 10% you would get 25% as a store if you were an affiliate. So I hope that's clear. So the 25%, the way we came up with that number is by looking at the payment breakdown and seeing what's the largest possible amount we can give stores that, that are using Bookshop um, and still stay in business. And the answer to that was 25%. So that's how we came up with that number. Um, if a customer happens to search for a book that appears on a bookstore staff list, Will the book detail page say something like, this title appears on these recommended book lists? 
Yes. Okay. It, it will. And, um, and if somebody, and somebody can browse your book list from that page. In fact, I'll share my screen to show it. Um, hopefully we can just go to, uh, Friday black. And if we scroll down on here, you'll see it's on this book list. And so if I had searched for Friday black, oops, let's see. Um, and I clicked in here, that list is in here. So we might end up with a hundred lists that have Friday black on them, in which case they'll, those lists will be rotated through randomly. Or it'll also be like if you're looking at a thriller and a list is mostly thrillers, then it'll be more likely to show that list than a list that is, has one thriller on it and most of the books aren't thrillers. So there will be some you know, some accounting for taste in, dis in how we decide to what, what list to display. But basically all the lists that are, that apply to a book can appear and will be rotated through the system at all times and anytime anybody buys. So if Greenlight Books has a staff pick list and Friday Black is on it, the Greenlight Books staff pick list could appear here. And if anybody clicks on it and adds this to their cart, Greenlight will then get that affiliate fee because it came from their staff pick list. Okay. If, if a school or nonprofit wants to sign up as an affiliate instead of with Amazon, is there a way to show how much money is being raised for the organization? Yeah, basically, um, I mean, they will get, they, they, when they go to their affiliate dashboard, they can see it whenever they want. Um, and we will probably have a breakdown where it says like how much money is raised for local bookstores. Probably we'll have a breakdown if you click into that where you can see how much has been raised for affiliates as well. But it would be a total sum. It wouldn't tell you. Only that affiliate can actually see how much money they've raised personally. Is there a way to upload an entire book list rather than entering title by title? There will be before we launch. Um, and yeah, authors are, I see that there's a question about authors. I want to mention that the Authors Guild has been very supportive of this idea. Um, we, they asked us for information about Bookshop for their annual board meeting and they distributed information to Bookshop to all their board members. Um, and we really want authors to be using Bookshop and there's two ways an author can use Bookshop. So, Method one is like, if I want to get, if I want to double my royalty. So I've written a book and I'm getting a 10% royalty off of every book that's sold. And I want to put that on my website and I want to put a link to Bookshop um, on social media to tell people to buy my book. Well, if I use Bookshop as an affiliate, then I can get 10% of that sale too. And I can double my royalty and support independent bookstores at the same time by using a Bookshop link. So that's number one way that an author could use bookshop links is to support themselves a little bit more and double their royalty on the books that they're personally selling. Now, the second way book, an author can use bookshop is if their local store is a bookshop affiliate, then they can use that bookstore's affiliate links and they can put that bookstore's affiliate links on their website or on their social media or in their email newsletter. And then in that case, the bookstore will get 25% of all those author's sales. So, if an author wants to support their local store, they can. If they want to support themselves, they can. Same goes for publishers. We, we presented um, Bookshop to New Directions and New Directions said, yeah, we want to use it, but we don't want to be an affiliate. What we're going to do is we're going to choose a different bookstore every month and we're going to send all of the sales to that bookstore and, um, and benefit the stores that like support us as a publisher that way. And you know, that was their idea in the meeting. I'm not saying for sure that they're going to do it because they, they're, you know, that's up to them. But, um, but I thought it was a great idea and it's definitely a great way that anybody can use bookshop links to support their local stores. Um, a question, two questions. How will you, will you be incorporating any local or indie authors or is it all mainstream publishing books? And how, how do indie authors get their books on bookshop.org? 
do we have to send the information to you or does Ingram have to carry the book? For, for our launch, Ingram would have to carry the book. Um, I mean, Ingram carries a lot of books and so that's gonna capture most of them. Now, we do eventually wanna have all books and so we're working on different ways to do that. Um, but that won't be ready for January. You know, and so we would prefer that somebody, you know, find a way to be carried through Ingram. Um, and there could be, you know, if, if, um, if you use Lightning Source to publish your book and you emailed us, we could make sure that it appeared on Bookshop because Ingram will automatically list all the Lightning Source books in their catalog. Um, and there's other ways that we can do it. But certainly in the distant future, we definitely want all indie authors to be able to list their books on Bookshop and use Bookshop. But there's only so much we can do before we launch. Will Bookshop be able to provide affiliates with widgets to embed in their own sites? Yes, we will. Those might not be ready um, on January 28th, but they will be ready shortly after. And it'll just be like a little widget, a little iframe that you can plug into to your website and it'll create a little Bookshop buy button for that book. And in the meantime, before we do that, you can just use a bookshop hyperlink and um, do it that way. Um, Nikki, did you have a question for them that, oh, you're muted. No, I think I, my question has to do with the relationship with regionals, which I think, you know, we can do an email, but I have lots of ideas. Good. <laughs> so. We have a, several different ways that we could work with you to support our member stores through this program. So that's really exciting to think about that possibility. And we only have a couple minutes left. Are there any more questions that folks have? Um, while, we, while we see if there's any more questions, I just want to emphasize that um, we are, this is an experiment and it's an experiment designed to support independent bookstores and everybody from the investors, to myself, um, to Sarah, everybody involved is doing this out of a love for independent bookstores. And that means that we're gonna be very receptive to your feedback. It might be impossible for us to please every independent bookstore in the country and get them all on board, et cetera, but we will certainly listen to everybody and you know, we're going to have an open call for an advisory board. If you want to be on the advisory board, you can email Sarah. Um, if before we launch or after we launch, you have a great idea that you think we should incorporate, we'll look at incorporating it. If there's something that you think is stepping on your toes as a bookseller or that you're worried about that we're doing, we can talk about it and try to mitigate that. We're going to be really open and iterative. And the other thing is like I have designed and launched many really successful digital projects and they're always iterative. You're never finished. You make it better every single week and you're responding to what's, what, you're, what you're actually seeing in the world to make those improvements. So when we launch, that's not gonna be Bookshop, that's not gonna look like what Bookshop looks like um, in August. By August, Bookshop is gonna be a stronger, better platform and partly better because of your feedback and doing the right thing with your feedback. And we've already made some changes based on bookseller feedback. When we first announced that we were gonna launch, a lot of publishers said, great, are you gonna do signed pre-order campaigns? We really wanna do signed pre-order campaigns for, through you. And we talked to some booksellers and they're like, no, that would be terrible because signed pre-order campaigns are a big way for us to get sales to our websites. And so we don't want publishers to start using you for signed pre-order campaigns because they might choose you instead of an indie. So we went to, all the big five publishers and said, we're not gonna do signed pre-order campaigns on Bookshop, even though we could, because we want to really emphasize you should be choosing a local indie for that author to do that signed pre-order campaign instead of going with us. So we're giving up signed pre-order campaigns purely to protect that profitability for the for bookstores. And we're, another thing that we, we in the beginning, because, um, Goodreads reviews are free and available through an API. We were going to put Goodreads reviews on our site along with our bookmarks reviews to give people a better sense of how a book has been received in the community. It turns out that bookstores, uh, independent bookstores, really don't like Goodreads because they're owned by Amazon. 
and bookstores really would prefer it if we didn't have Goodreads on the site at all. And so we took Goodreads off the site and now there's no Goodreads reviews on the site. So we're really responsive and we will continue to be responsive. So please just communicate. And if you have concerns or if you have ideas, communicate with us. You'll find that we're very open. Um, so our time is running out. I wanted to ask, uh, will you be doing a presentation at Winter Institute and will the staff be available to answer questions? Yeah, we have uh, a presentation, I think on Thursday afternoon, but it's on the program. And we will also be at a consultation station um, throughout the conference. Okay. Um, one last question. Um, how are you going to handle competing affiliates? A customer comes in through one link but buys off a staff list for another affiliate. Will it be first touch or last touch? Um, any, it's, it's all per book. So if somebody comes through your affiliate link and puts a bunch of books in their cart, those are all going to be your books. If they and if you have lists, then they're probably going to see your list too. They're not going to some, they're not going to see somebody else's book list if they came from your affiliate. As long as you have lists, if you haven't made any lists, then they might see somebody else's list, um, and then they might buy a book from that list. And in that case, that one book that they bought from that other affiliate's list would go to the other affiliate. So there is a little bit of of chance that like a cart will be split and three books will be to one affiliate and the third, fourth will be to another. We don't think it's going to happen very often because if a book comes in through an affiliate, they're going to see that affiliate's list first on the product pages and all that. Um, but yeah, there is, you know, it's basically by the book. So most customers coming from an affiliate will just be adding books through search and through that affiliate's list. And so that won't really be an issue, but if it does happen, all the books that that person added to the cart before they picked one from an affiliate's recommendation list would go to the first affiliate and then the last, that book that they added at the end would go to the affiliate that created the list. Okay. Well, our time is up. Thank you so much for presenting all this information to the booksellers and thank everyone for coming to this webinar. We are recording it, so it'll be available um, sometime next week along with a recap article. And Sarah, what's your email address again if people want to reach out to you? So I'm Sarah with an H, and then it's dot, my last name, Pi, H-I-G-H at bookshop.org. So sarah.pi at bookshop.org. All right, thank you so much. This is the official end of our webinar, and hope to see many of you next time. Thank Thanks, you. Sarah.